What's up guys, welcome back to Splash Daddy Speaks and today we're gonna to be talking about something called the list of hate. Now what this is, is I got this from a guy named Brandon Carter. If you're not familiar, awesome fitness YouTuber. He has this concept where you have a list of hate. And what that is, is it's the people throughout your life who have just pissed you off. And it's the people who have kind of put negative thoughts about yourself in your mind and who maybe doubted your potential and who told you what you could or could not achieve. And it's not just who they are, but the specific things they said. If you're honest with yourself, you all know specific people and on top of that, specific things they have said that have just stuck with you for years and years and just you can feel your blood boiling whenever you think about these moments with them, right? And his point of the list of hate is to use it as motivation for you to accomplish your goals and to prove them wrong, right? And then he also has something called a list of great. That's where you picture the ultimate version of yourself or like your ultimate competitor who you need to beat, right? So either the best version of yourself you need to be, which is also probably the same thing as the best person you're competing against in life and everything you need to do that they're doing and more to beat them at whatever realm of human endeavor, right? Now it's funny because a lot of people talk about motivation as garbage and say that discipline is more important. And while I wholeheartedly agree, there's also nothing that gets you more lit up than thinking about the people who have left that kind of scar on your sense of self, right? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go over my list of hate. So I'm not gonna drop any names because I'm not trying to be that guy and I'm not trying to start any drama. Half these people don't even listen to me, don't even follow me anymore, don't even know anything about my life anymore. So I could drop them their name, you know, but I'm not going to. So the first one, I've, I'm just gonna go through the list first and just say what they all said, and then I'm gonna come back and reiterate. So if, if it's out of context, just bear with me. So this one guy told me in front of a group of guys and a lot of girls, it's okay, Ashton doesn't understand how to talk to women. Then there's this girl who told me once, referring to this other girl, she's way too out of your league. There's this guy who commented on Facebook once about me who said, he's just mad nobody wants to join his band. Then there was a time where I did get in a band with all my best friends, and they're all way better musicians than me. And then this one guy kind of asked if he could be a part of it, and I immediately shot him down. And then he said, straight to my face, just don't get too cocky. I love that one. The next one, man, this is, <laughs> this is a long story, but what she said to me was, it doesn't matter how much money you make or how famous you get, you'll never be an alpha male. Next one, in college, this girl told me, Lindsay is out of your league. Notice that one's happened twice. The next one, this is a list of hate because I don't hate this girl and it didn't even bother me, but I'll come back to why I'm mentioning this one. This girl at a bar once told me, she goes, you're the most confident, average looking guy I've ever met. Love that. There's a guy I used to have as a business partner who I overheard having a conversation about me and he was talking negatively about me and he said, he will never go anywhere. And then there's a guy who I told that I'm not going to have casual sex anymore and I'm not going to sleep with girls just to do it and that I'm only gonna be intimate with, with a woman again if I can even remotely see us going somewhere and I'm not gonna jump the gun and then I'm just over hooking up and doesn't do anything for me anymore. And that version of me is the only version of me he's ever known. And he said, I doubt that. And I said, no, I'm serious. And then he just goes, I'll believe it when I see it. But not in a joking way. Pretty much just telling me that like, I'm not capable of change, right? So that's my list of hate. These comments have ranged from, I think the oldest one I can notice is one in college, and that was like 2010 or 11, probably 10, 2010 I think, and then all the way to a few months ago. There's a full range of them, right? And what's interesting to me is if you notice the pattern in them, they're almost entirely about women or music and accomplishments of different kinds. 
And it's interesting because if any man's honest, these are two of the biggest, the things that we put like the most emphasis on for ourselves as men, right? It's how successful are you with women in whatever realm that is to you? And then how accomplished are you? And again, whatever realm that is to you. And there's things that are both objective and subjective in both of these domains. And it's funny to me when I look back at these two things, because I wonder why these two points have always felt like, I don't wanna say pain points for me, just why did they stick with me, right? Why did these kinds of comments stay in my mind and not leave my mind? And why can I remember these literally 13, 14 years ago so for some of them, right? Because I start to ask, are these two things that I've always had insecurities about? Are they genuine values of mine that I think are really important objectively? Or maybe I just think they're subjectively important to me, you know? Are they values that I actually want to have? Are they values that I want to want to have? Or are they values I just have and I'm not self-aware enough and self-actualized enough to put these aside and think about other things, right? Like no one's ever told me I was mean and then like that stuck with me forever, right? No one's ever told me you're not funny and that stuck with me forever. Cause I know I'm not mean and I know I'm funny. So it's funny to me to think about then, okay, if those things that I know aren't true didn't, like if people did say them, I wouldn't even remember. But if people did say them, you know, they didn't stick with me. So why did these stick with me? And I kind of want to go back over each one individually right now and explain each one from what might have been an insecurity perspective I had, what might be a value perspective I had then, or what I even have now, and just having standards for yourself in general. And I'm kind of just talking off the cuff here. I have a very general idea of how I'm going to approach this, but yeah, I just want to go through them all and just kind of see what gold I dig up. So let's go to the first one. I was in a room with a few female friends of mine who I was really close with, and I was sitting in there with this guy who said out loud, it's okay, Ashton doesn't understand how to talk to women. Now what's funny is he could not look me in the eye while he said this, right? When he said this to me, he turned towards one of the girls and said it with this smirk on his face. And now what's also funny is one of the girls in that room, he had been leading on thinking he was interested in her for a very long time. But the truth is he had no other prospects, he wasn't interested in her, he knew she liked him, and so he used her as validation to feel like a man and to feel good about himself. So it's funny when I look back at the comment he made saying, I don't understand how to talk to women, when trust me, I do, <laughs> which I wasn't gonna sit there and like, you know, argue with him. I don't need to. If you know the truth about something, you just don't need to fight for yourself with something like this. But I sat there and I was like, man, this guy has been leading this chick on for something like six months. And I think the fact that he made that point was really to mask his own insecurity about how he did not understand how to talk to women that he was genuinely interested in. And he had no self-confidence. And so all he could do was attack my ability to talk to women because it made him feel better by reinforcing his false delusional belief that him talking to this girl who he was leading on was talking to women but it's not. Anyone can go talk to some girl that they have zero interest in and be completely themselves. But it takes a man with balls and courage to be able to go talk to a woman he's very interested in and risk the actual rejection. So does it kind of stick with me because of maybe like being bad with girls in high school or something? Yeah, kind of. But also the more I think about it and talk out loud, the more I realize that it stuck with me because there is that portion, but there's also the portion of understanding most people's insults towards you are just a reflection of themselves and just trying to tear down your building to make theirs taller, which is what he was doing. Let's go to the next one. This one does hit home a little more. It's when I talked to a female friend of mine about this girl who I'd seen her walking downtown with. I drove past and I texted her and I was like, who the heck was that? she's beautiful, hook me up. Doesn't say anything positive, only texts me back, she's way too out of your league. And if you remember my first video, you'll remember me talking about the fact that 
the moment someone tells me or the world tells me no or tells me I can't have something I want, my immediate first thought is, fuck you, give it to me, right? And I think when I saw that girl, I couldn't pull over. I was in the middle of downtown Austin, but like I would have approached her. I tried to reach out to a close friend saying, hey, I've never seen her before. I didn't even know you were friends with this girl. Introduce me. Being told she's out of my league, all I felt was and heard was, she's too good for you. You are not enough. And almost in a way, like, because there was no niceness involved in the text, almost how dare you think you could have her? Who do you think you are, like, little man? Like, go back in your cave, you cretin, right? And it's funny because every man knows the quality of woman he really wants in a partner. And I think most men settle and most men don't ever try to get the partner. This isn't just about looks, right? This is about so many different things. But I think the, the female that I was friends with, nowhere near as attractive as her friend, objectively. This is not a subjective opinion. No guy would look at her and think that she was more attractive than the friend. It was levels above, right? And I was like, you know, by her being with her, she rejected me for her friend. She didn't even introduce me to her friend. She rejected me as if she was her friend rejecting me. And I was like, you know, the more I think about knowing this female that I'm friends with, she's pretty insecure. Like I know some things she said, I've never forgotten some things she said. And it's funny because then it's like, oh wait, she wants to feel that hot. She wants to have guys text her female friends about herself saying, hey, can you introduce me to her? And it probably doesn't happen that much. Definitely not as much as this girl, promise you. And I bet you anything that like, the insecurity is, wow, no guy approaches me that way via text through my friends. If I like shoot him down on behalf of her, then it's basically like I was the one getting asked out, right? And so it's just funny, again, it hints at that man side of like, you're not good enough, become more. But also you look at the crap that's going on in other person's life and realize, oh, this is coming from lack in them, not lack in me. Because I've been with and dated girls as attractive as this girl. So I know it's not a lack of me, but it's it still stings. You can take that manly like pride sting like, oh, am I not good enough? Uh, like, don't, don't look at me, <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, yeah, you can just really start to see the light in others and the darkness in others too. Let's go to the next one. I made a politically incorrect comment online, which I never do. My first and only time ever, will never do it again. And totally unrelated. And this, I've been trying to get a few people to join a band with me back in 2020, 19, 19 and 2020, right? And this guy commented on it, totally unrelated to anything about my political comment, comments, he's just mad nobody wants to join his band because nobody had joined my band. And it's funny because it comes out of insecurity again with me being like, I really value myself as a drummer and I know I'm not as good as I could be or should be, but I'm, I also know I'm way better than I used to be. So it stabs at the, oh God, like, am I not good enough, right? Am I not accomplished enough? Am I not skillful enough? But then also, this guy, I'm totally, anyone who's listening who knows me is just gonna know who this guy is, but also fuck him, because you suck, dude. This guy tried doing his own music with his own band, it went nowhere, and all he's managed to do, even remotely successful as a musician, is be the backup guitar player for his brother-in-law's band. And that's all he does, and he all he can do is ride his coattails. When I think about, wait, that's his career. Holy crap, the whole nobody wants to join his band. It's like, no dude, nobody wanted to listen to your band. Nobody believed in your music enough to be like, he is a leader, he's going somewhere, he's a producer, he's a composer, he's a great songwriter, he's better than his brother-in-law. This all comes from insecurity of, it's so obvious, this all comes from insecurity within him of not being as talented as his brother-in-law and always playing second fiddle to him. So again, the stabbing at your personal thing, but it's also their own stabbing that they're stabbing themselves that they've been stabbed with and that they took personally and they chose to hate themselves about. So yeah, I don't want to fully say fuck him because that's really sad. That's the best he could do. But man, you know, you get what you get. The next one, when I actually did join a band with a few of my best friends and they're all fantastic musicians. And I truly believe, they told me that like, I'm just as good as them, I'm not. You guys are too nice to me. 
I know I was the worst in the band. I know I was. And I was good enough to play with them, but I think I was just over the line good enough while they were still miles and leagues ahead of me at their own instruments. And then one of them being a guitar player who's fantastic. And this other guy who played guitar found out that I had started the group in the band and I was gonna record an album and approached me to play guitar on it. And I immediately just told him, no, I've already got him, uh, thanks though. Cause I didn't know what else to say. I was just like, no, like I'm good. I wasn't trying to be, you know, hurtful or harmful or anything. And then the, his immediate response was, just don't get too cocky. First thing out of his mouth, and then he turned and walked away. And it's like, he was levels beneath me, to be honest. And I realized it's because he has nothing to be cocky about. You know, I'm kind of cocky. Like, I definitely have things where I know I'm the shit, and I would rather verbalize it than be humble. And I think you should. You should never talk down about yourself. The brain doesn't know the difference, right? The brain doesn't know the difference between, like, the true negative self-talk and other people telling you negative things about yourself. You're your own worst critic. You're either the number one thing that's gonna hold yourself back or you're the number one thing that's gonna push yourself forward. It is you. You are the biggest factor. You have the biggest percentage of the weight you carry for your own future. And this guy just did not believe in himself. He had never truly practiced and he told me not to get cocky, but it's really because he knew that he didn't deserve to be in the group. And if he could attack my pride, then it would protect his. Next one. God, this one is such a long story. I'm gonna to try to condense it. It's the girl who said, it doesn't matter how much money you make or how famous you get, you'll never be an alpha male. <laughs> that term is just thrown around just, man, way too much. So this is a girl who was so insecure, told me constantly she was insecure, told me constantly she knew she was stupid, which is sad, but I mean, I mean, she wasn't like the brightest, you know? She knew she wasn't that smart. She valued her creativity and her creative side, but like, and she was decent at some things on her creative side, but a lot of it was just not that good. And she was watching me be fairly successful at creative things. And she saw me dedicating myself to work constantly, every day, hours a day, hours a day. First thing when I woke up, last thing before I go to bed. And she would invite me to come hang out with her and our group of friends. And I would just say, no, I have to do this. No, I'm working on this. No, I'm working on this. And I think she saw that I would give up socializing and I would have a more sparse social life than her and than anything she would ever give up. And she valued her social life more than her own success and ambition. I think she knew that I was gonna make a lot of money one day. And she knew that I was gonna be famous one day. And I think it just drove her crazy knowing that she didn't have what it took to make sacrifices, but I did. And it's very funny because the final comment, you'll never be an alpha male part. She knew that that was a weak point in me. That's in most men where you do want to be seen as like a leader and strong and capable and intelligent. And I think she knew I would make a lot of money and become famous. And she was like, that doesn't matter. You'll never be an alpha male. Like she knew I was gonna be successful on the external. So she knew she couldn't tear that down. Like you'll never make money. She knew I was going to. You'll never become famous. I'm not famous yet, but I'm going to be. She knew I was going to be. But, so what that left her by getting rid of the external things was I can attack his internal. And she knows I value being very much a badass and very much just like a masculine guy. And that was her last arrow in her quiver to shoot at me and try to take me down. And she just missed. And it's just so funny to me now looking back at this. So that was that one. The next one, it's a repeat kind of, but in college, this is the oldest one. There's this girl who was just so beautiful, so attractive and very sweet, humble, not cocky about it. Just was a chill, regular girl. And I asked my closest girlfriend, I mentioned something about her one day. I didn't ask her to like hook me up or anything, but I said something along those lines, whatever it was. And then she said, Lindsay is out of your league. And it's like, it's funny. It's like, well, what do you think about me? I had just known her for like six months. It's like, you don't really know someone until you know them for years. So who are you to say that? You're wrong. And I think it's the same thing as the other girl where my female friend was attractive. But again, this girl is just like levels above her objectively. Like no, like no one can argue. And yeah, I think it was her feeling of like, oh, I'll shoot him down for her because then that means that I am that attractive. So whenever a girl tells you some other girl's out of your league, just don't fucking listen. 
unless you're actually a piece of shit and you suck and you have no personality, which you probably already know is true, then listen and go change that. This one, the girl at the bar who said, you're the most confident average looking guy I've ever met. This really doesn't belong on my list of hate per se. I keep it here because it's funny to me because this girl is again, extremely attractive. And I went and approached her at the bar and she was ignoring me, talking to her friend, would give me like one word responses, roll her eyes, turn her back. And I just kept going. I was like, oh, bitch, you're gonna find out real fast. And so I just kept talking, talking, talking. And then finally she just turned and looked at me. This, is must, this must have been between five and 10 minutes. I would guess seven minutes of me just not quitting. Most people would tell you, dude, chill. But I knew I was gonna break through at some point. And she just turns at me and smiles. And she wasn't even trying to be rude. You could see it, you could feel and hear the genuineness in her voice, but she just goes, you're the most confident, average looking guy I have ever met. And I was like, thanks, that's one of the nicest compliments I've heard today. And she thought it was funny, we laughed, and then we actually talked for like 20 minutes. There wasn't that chemistry, but that's not the point. The point is that like, even an insult that can attack you as a man, you can turn around and play with it. And then just be like, you know what? Like, yeah, I'm a good looking guy. I don't look like a freaking, you know, male model. I'm not Chris Hemsworth walking around here, you know? But I'll take confidence over that for sure. That speaks volumes louder than just what you have to be born looking like, right? Next one, me overhearing the conversation where my previous business partner was talking about me behind my back and said he will never go anywhere. I know for a fact that this man has a horrible relationship with his father. His father is a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And my business partner, my ex-business partner, he was a millionaire. I think he had just gotten worth like two mil. So technically multi when he said this, but I know for a fact that his dad doesn't believe in him. And I know that he hates that and that he has a horrible relationship with him. And I know that he tortures himself. And I know that's his biggest negative driving force in his life. Cause his dad who has made you know, 10 million a year, watching his son make, you know, three quarters of a million a year. It just doesn't compare. Like, is it a lot of money? Yeah, of course. But like, like relatively, he doesn't think he'll ever be as good as his dad. And he doesn't believe, this is a 40 year old man. And he doesn't believe he can ever earn his dad's love because he will never be good enough. And he will never go anywhere in his father's eyes. So by him projecting this onto me, he doesn't have to acknowledge that he's the one who won't go anywhere in his father's eyes. If he can be like, Ashton's never going anywhere. It takes that pressure off himself. It's just projection and he gets to put it on someone else. It's like a negative hat, negative energy hat. He gets to take it off himself, put it on someone else, pretend it's on them, stare at it. It's delusion, right? Stare at them, point at the negative energy hat on their head, but it's still on your head and we're all seeing it, right? And then the last one, when I told this guy that I was going to not sleep with any girls anymore, who I don't see myself having a relationship with, how I'm just so clocked out of the casual dating scene and how it just does nothing for me anymore. And then he said, I doubt that. I'll believe it when I see it. This is someone who has changed like very little in their life. I've known them for years. I'd like to say I've seen them grow, but I really, 1% growth maybe, an abysmal rate for anyone who truly cares about their own growth. And it's just funny because he doubts and doesn't believe that he can change. And so again, he's just projecting it onto me that like, I don't have self-control, that I'll take what I can get, that I don't have standards. And again, he's just wrong. So yeah, that's me going over all of them. Let's talk about some takeaways. Number one takeaway, people have both virtuous motivations and toxic motivations at the same time, and that's okay. That's what makes us human. You know, people talk all the time about like revenge being the best success and I wholeheartedly agree on half of the coin and the other half of the coin is you need some virtuous reasons too. Like if it gets you there and gets you to accomplish your goals by being fueled by the people who have pissed you off in your past, that's awesome. I have used that to get me to where I want to be with multiple things right now. I've overcome the things that these people said I would never overcome and I still use it to even raise my standards higher. Be like, well, now I'm just gonna have to prove them wrong 10 times over. It's funny because I heard Alex Hormozzi talk about, you know, this isn't that great because you can get to the end of the road, really have proved them wrong. And then you realize that these people who you don't like, who pissed you off, you let them control your entire life 
and control all of your thoughts. And if you saw them today, like 10 years later, 20 years later, and told them like, look, bitch, told you, they would look at you and be like, I don't even remember saying that. It was so offhand to me. But you took that so personally and made your entire life about it. <laughs> You're a loser, dude. <laughs> You know what I mean? Even if you've accomplished much greater things in them. So that's why I think it's very important to be self-aware about what your motivations are and are they driving you forward because you genuinely care about the things they said or because you don't care? Like if someone talked shit to me and was like, Ashton's awful at ice skating. Yeah, I fall every time. Like I'm not good, like whatever. So like, I would never take that personally. But you know, someone comes to me and says like, he's not a good drummer or you know, the girl he wants is out of his league, then it's like, mm, I'm gonna have to prove you wrong now. So it comes from the good and the bad. It comes from the good of like, I care to be good at these things. I think it's important to not lower your standards for who you date. I think it's important not to lower your standards for how high of goals you try to achieve, right? And both of these things are true. And the other side of that coin is like, the insecurity side, it's like, did I used to think I was a terrible drummer? Yeah. Did I used to be really bad with girls? Yeah. But you can use both sides of this coin, right? You can use the revengeful side of the bad side of like, screw you for poking at like slight insecurities, which are really just your own insecurities, but also my insecurities. Watch me push myself forward now to prove you wrong tenfold. But then you can also have your virtuous motivations of, like my biggest virtuous motivation as of late is I want to be proud of myself. Like I look at the things that I am proud of and the things I'm not proud of. I've dropped all the things I'm not proud of anymore. And I put all that time and energy into doing new things where it's like, I would be so damn proud of myself if I accomplished this, 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 and this, right? Another one is like, my parents have done so much for me. I owe it to them to accomplish great things because of everything they've put me through or you know done for me you know what i mean my ancestors who like fought off the bubonic plague and killed each other during the civil war my grandfathers who killed people during world war ii like they did all of this for their future children's children you know that's me so for me to not you know go do this for them is like a slap in the face it's shitting on their graves which i don't want to do so those are your virtuous things and your kind of toxic things you literally need both is what i'm saying there's a study showing that mice, when they are hungry and go to find cheese, they will run, let's just say, five times faster. If they have something positive to run towards, right? Like, oh, cheese, food, good. Let's go get that good reward, boom. But if they are sensing the cheese and they have the sense that there's a cat behind them, chasing them to eat them and kill them, they run 10 times faster. And so the negative stuff will 1000% motivate you harder than the positive. People who act like, I just wanna be a good person, I should change the world, I have no insecurities, I just wanna do it all for the good of others. They're slime balls, don't trust them. Trust the person who tells you, yeah, and I also wanna prove, these are not the people, I also wanna prove Todd, Daryl, and Rebecca wrong. Trust that person, that person's not lying to you. And definitely trust and befriend the person who tells you both. You know, here's the eight people who pissed me off when I was younger. I'm gonna prove them all wrong. Oh, also I wanna fulfill my own potential to be proud of myself. Trust that person. Trust me, guys. So yeah, I think it's fine to use this fire as fuel. And the number two takeaway is use this, but don't abuse this. This is where, when you're looking at the negative sides, you can use it to your advantage but you don't wanna abuse yourself in thinking about the negatives, right? So like with the insecurity about women, is it these are areas that I lacked? Is it these are areas that I still lack? You know, do I genuinely think these things are important and worth striving for? If I didn't have these experiences, would I even be motivated to do anything? Like if you've had no negative experiences in your life, would you be motivated to do anything? Yeah, you could be, but also the majority of the greatest success stories were people who were running away from super dark stuff. And so when I say use, but don't abuse it, I mean, use it to your advantage, but don't abuse yourself over just obsessing about the negative and the negative people. Just being like, screw Jimmy, screw Jimmy. <laughs> Tell you grab a gun, <laughs> screw Jimmy. <laughs> like, you don't need to, 
you know, I, like I used to do that and I just used to think about the people I hated. But then once you actually start making progress in the good things, you get the good side of the coin and you get to look at the light in the experience and not just the darkness. And now, you know, this fuel you used as fire, the fire is burning so bright that the darkness is left, most of it is left, and most of the stuff in your immediate field of vision is the positive stuff. And you're just so stoked on life itself, but then you can still see the darkness if you look far enough out away from the fire, and it's like, oh yeah, that's right, they said that, they said that. But this stuff is closer to me now that I can see, and the light is brighter, and so my attention is on this, and this is what I mostly see. If I try to look at the darkness, I can see some of that crap back there. Oh yeah, well, and you all see this fire. This is a pretty sweet fire, right? I hope that metaphor made sense. It was very Moses-y, burning bushy. But yeah, these are the main things to take away. And I would just challenge you guys to go through your list of hate and think about what you want. Why do you want it? Do you want to want it for these motivations or do you want it for other motivations and how can you take this coin of the negative things of your past and the positive things of self-actualization and self-growth and learn to use them both at the proper ratio for you to push yourself forward so yeah this is splash daddy speaks thanks for listening to my video and stay tuned for the next one because you might be just one splash away peace